house of the Lord one more time. And we would just like to say good morning and we welcome each of you to our services this morning. Those in the sanctuary as well as those who are joining us by live streaming, Facebook, YouTube, or however you may be joining us. Uh, we do welcome you in the name of Jesus the Christ this morning. All right, so let us do a few announcements first, and then we will get on into our service. Uh, we would like to invite each of you to join in with us weekly. We have our Sunday school lesson online uh, via Zoom. Uh, the information will be put in front of you, but we have uh, every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we have our Sunday school online, and we would like to invite each of you all out for our lesson that we have. Our liturgical dance ministry has started back up, and we are proud of our young ladies that we have, and we do invite, if we have any other young folks who would like to join our liturgical dance ministry, we do invite each of you all to get in contact with Sister Anderson, um, and she will be glad to talk to you about that. All right, let's see. Now, we are going to be having a grand opening of our um, at our church for the Royal Opportunity Connect. Let us connect you to resources. This is going to be on the 25th of this month from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock, uh, 635 College Street. We have free giveaways, various vendors, uh, free uh, blood pressure check. And if you are interested, please contact Reverend Mary Anderson or the Deaconess Charlene Ratliff um, about this. This is all through growth. They're going to have their grand opening here on the 25th of this month. All right, this week was a busy week. We had quite a bit going on. We had our Sunday school lesson uh, that we have each week. We also have uh, the Vance County Missionaries uh, who met at Big Roy Creek. I did get to go out one night and I enjoyed that one night that I went. And then we had our uh, Vance County Sunday School, which was here this past Thursday. And uh, Deacon Taylor would like for me to give thanks to each and every person who came out, who did something. I want to thank uh, Deaconess Williams, uh, who had the food prepared, the Usher's Ministry, uh, each and every person that did a part, and our pastor, uh, due to having a procedure, was not able to teach, so he did ask me to teach in his spot, and I was honored that he asked me to teach in his spot in the first place, but I believe that the Lord showed up, and we give God all the credit for all that took place all week long. All right, now there, were, there are those who we have uh, that we have lifted up in prayer, that we would continually lift up in prayer. We want to give thanks for our pastor and Deaconess Cooper, who both went to and through their procedures and made it out on this side. Uh, we give them praise for that. We want to continue to pray for Sister Sheila Izzard, uh, Reverend Cora McDowell, uh, Deaconess Linda Cruz, Sister Brenda Gant, Mother Freda LeMay, and Mother Zelma Kaysan, Sister Camilla Hunter, Brother Willie D. Hunt, Sister Margaret Malone, Brother Emory Cash Sr., and Sister Patricia Cash. Brother John Meadows, Dr. Lawrence Johnson, Elder Robert Baby, Sister Tawana Gray, and Brother James Harris. James Harris, we do give uh, God thanks in advance for what he is going to do, and we give God thanks for what he has already done. Amen. Let us open and have prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to, come to you. We just want to say thank you. We thank you for one more sunny day, God. God, we thank you for just allowing us to have the activities of our limbs, God, to be able to sit here, uh, be able to be online, wherever it is, God, that we can tune in to your service, God, and that we can be a part, whether in person or through social media. God, we give you praise for that, God. God, we just ask that that we're here today, that we are just not coming to hear a word, we are not just coming to hear a song, we're not just coming to hear a prayer, we're not just coming, God, just to watch, but God, we're coming expecting something from you, God. God, we come with an open heart, with open arms, we come with open hearts, we come with open minds, God, we're asking that you'll speak to us, that you'll speak through us, God. 
God, that you will do what you do best, God. God, we just give your name the glory and the praise for who you are and for whose we are, God. And we just thank you right now for what you are going to do, God. God, there are those this morning thank you, who come with one issue or another. I don't know what the issue is, God, but I put it in your hands, God. I ask you to cover those who might be looking for jobs. God, I ask you to cover those who might have sickness in their body. They may have some appointment that they have not told us about. God, you know, and we put it all in your hands, God. God, we just ask that you would bless Shiloh, bless every member, every friend. God, each and every person who's listening, God. But God, don't just stop at Shiloh. Every church that's planted by your hands this morning, God, we ask you to just show up and show out, God. God, to do what you do best. Because our whole country needs more and more of you, God. God, we just give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for all that you're going to do. This prayer we pray in the precious and the holy name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning comes from the ninth chapter of John. And from the ninth chapter of John, I want to read one verse. And since it's one verse from the ninth chapter of John, I'll read it from two different translations. So from John, the ninth chapter, I want to read the 25th verse. John 9, 25. The King James Version, I'll read that one first. And it says, And he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, <coughs> now I see. And the Living Bible says, Verse 25, I don't know whether he is good or bad, the man replied, but I know this, I was blind and now I see. Amen. May the hearers of God's word be blessed.
we all start. Uh, there's those you haven't spoke to, so we allow you to stand up and <laughs> wave at somebody. That'd be the only wave and smile that you might get. Even though it's under a mask, I think you can still tell us a smile. This morning for the scripture, I'm going to read one verse from John the ninth chapter, the 25th verse. King James said, he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. And the living Bible, I don't know whether he is good or bad, the man replied. But I know this, I was blind, and now I see. And from this verse, I would like to preach from the topic, Thank God I Can See. Yeah. In the Bible that we read, from Genesis to Revelation, there are just certain verses that you can just read one verse, even though we're thankful for the whole text. You can just read one verse, and that whole verse will carry all by itself. Uh, matter of fact, our Bible starts out on a tough note, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There is a Big Bang theory out there, and they have a theory that some particles came together, that some particles got hot, and they expanded over billions of years. And for something that was dead, all of us are now here. But God says that's not the case. He says in the beginning, I, God, created the heavens and the earth. That one verse speaks volumes all by itself. Uh, some of you all might know Psalms 24 and 1. It says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Not only is God saying he created the earth, but he is saying that it and everything in it is mine. It's so good they even made a song about it. Y'all remember he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the brother and the sister. Everything here belongs to God. Amen. Some of you all might be a little bit more uh, knowledgeable of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. I'm not sure what you know, but we know that there is somebody that you can go to that will lead you through whatever the situation is that you're going through in life. Then there might be some Jeremiah folks, 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I don't know what you're going through right now, but God has plans for things to be better for you in the future. Then there might be some folks, this one I can call that I believe everybody ought to know, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, yeah. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever <clears throat> believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God yeah. loves us so much that he gave his only son for each and every one of us. And I'll finish with this one right here. Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Let's us know that there are some things that we cannot do on our own. But with Christ helping us out, we are able to do exceedingly above anything that we can think or we can even ask of. And he can do above what we can ask or think. But then there are more verses in the Bible. When you read them, they need a little bit more context and content. And that's where this one falls this morning. I don't know whether he's good or bad. I don't know whether he's a sinner or not. The man replied, but I know this. I was blind and now I see. All of this comes from John the ninth chapter. John the ninth chapter talks about a man that they find was blind from birth. 
Here is Jesus and his disciples coming along. And sometimes when we come from church, we want to be a little bit more deep. Sometimes when we come from church, we want to be a little bit more spiritual. And they ask Jesus a question. Jesus, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Now, I was always taught that the only question, the only dumb question, is the question not asked. But sometimes we have to think about what we do ask. I'm not going to say whether their question was dumb or not. But when you look at the situation, what sin can anybody commit before they're born that'll make them be born blind? But let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they would heard something about reincarnation. Maybe they thought the man had sinned in a prior lifetime and now he is being punished in this lifetime for what he did in the last lifetime. Maybe they are thinking that uh, somewhere down the line he's going to do a big sin. And God is just allowing him to be blind right now for what he is going to do in the future. Then again, they thought maybe his mama did something. Maybe his daddy did something. And Jesus has to break down for them that everything that happens to you is not for sin. Sometimes you go through stuff just so that God can get the glory out of the situation. I don't know what you might go through in your life, but it's not always because you did something wrong. Maybe it's just because God wants to use you. God has to let them know that I am only going to be here for a little while. We know that his public ministry was only about three years from 30 to 33 years of age. And he says, I have to work while I was light so that it can be seen because there's going to be the time that I am not going to be here. And yet while he was speaking to them, Jesus spat on the ground. And he began to mix his spit with the dirt or with the clay and he spread that spit and dirt over the eyes of the blind man. Yeah, yeah. And he told that blind man to go and wash your eyes in the pool of Salaam. Now, now first off, first time I ever read this, I just thought that that was the nastiest thing in the world. I, I know this is Jesus, but why, Jesus, did you spit on the ground and rub it on that man's eyes? Because sometimes Jesus uses things that the world despises. Sometimes Jesus uses the thing that the world thinks is not that significant to bring something great out of it. Just look at me and you. The world might not think we're the greatest thing in the world. But that don't mean that God's not going to use us for something great. God's not going to use us to change somebody's life. If he can use spit and dirt, yeah. Yeah. I just want you to know that he can use me and you oh, yeah. for his glory. Yeah. But then I also thought it was strange that after he put the spit and the dirt on the man's eyes, that he told the man to go to the pool of Salaam. Yeah. But the man is blind. Then I reflected upon, and I remembered upon, when I was a little boy, we had a member here uh, by the name of Mr. Mills. Mr. Mills was a blind man that went to our church years ago. And I remember one Sunday after church, my dad took him home, and I was riding along with Mr. Mills as we took him home. And as we got close to the house, Mr. Mills said, I'm at the house. We hadn't stopped yet. And my dad asked him the question. He said, Mr. Mills, how do you know that we're at your house? He says, because I hear the voice of the children and I know their voice. He knew that we was at his house. But there was a car, I believe, that was parked in front of his house. So we couldn't park in front of his house. We parked maybe a house or so back. And my dad said, let me help you out. Mr. Mills says, no, I got it. Got out of the car. We watched him go in the house, do everything that he needed to do. We think sometimes when folks have a handicap, that they can't do what we can do. But just because they have a handicap does not mean that they're not able to do whatever it is that they need to do. So Jesus told the blind man after he put the spit on his eye, he says, I want you to go down to the pool of Salaam and wash your eyes. We get all excited. 
about the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus' garment, and it says instantly she was healed. Yes. The blind man, who had never seen before, who was blind from birth, went down to the pool of Siloam, and when he washed the mud, the dirt out of his eyes, instantly, just like that woman, he was able to see. Right. His sight came to him. And he was excited to be able to see the thing that he had only heard in the past. And now this man who was excited is going around and I know that everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows the blind man. Everybody knows him because they've seen him blind for all of his life. And now some folks are beginning to wonder, uh, isn't this that man? It, it, isn't he, this him that has been blind? And some folks say, yeah, it's him. And some folks says, no, it just looked like it. it. Isn't it strange? This man was blind, and they told him to go to the pool of Salaam. He went. Folks with sight can't realize if this is the same man that they had seen every day, that they had passed every day, going in and out of the temple, going to the market. They had seen him. Now they don't know if this is the same man that they've seen, even though they have vision. And so they go back and forth. Yes, yeah, him. No, it's, it's somebody that looks like him. And so now here comes the problem. They get all excited and they take this man who has been blind, who Jesus healed on the Sabbath day to the temple. It would seem like there's something that has never happened before. If you had a miracle that showed up in church, I, I, I just want to believe that on this morning, if there was somebody here who had never walked before, and God showed up and that person started to walk, that we would all be excited. Yeah. That we would all clap our hands. That we would all give God some glory because a miracle has happened. Yeah. Well, that's not what happened in Jerusalem. This is not what happened in this temple. Uh, they get in the temple and they said, uh, this man has been healed. Uh, who healed you? Now he had already told the other folks that it was Jesus that healed him. Uh -huh. Because he was blind, he didn't see Jesus, he didn't know what Jesus looked like. All he had ever heard was his voice. But now he comes into the temple. And the Sadducees, the Pharisees, they're all upset because they didn't heard about this Jesus before. Uh, they, they, they don't like the talk of this Jesus. Jesus is not their favorite subject to hear about. Yeah. And they're all upset because Jesus has healed the man on the Sabbath day. Now I recall reading them Ten Commandments too. I don't recall it saying don't work on the Sabbath day. I thought it says remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. How much holier can you get to receive an anointing from God that you pass on to somebody else. But, but, but that, that was not their interpretation of, of, of what the Sabbath day was. So I, I, I can't tell you how their interpretation is, but they're mad and upset with Jesus because he has healed on the Sabbath day. And now they go back and forth between the educated folks in the church and they say, uh, he must, he is a sinner because he has broken the Sabbath day rules and the Sabbath day law. But I'm glad that somebody in there had some good sense. Somebody in there says, uh, how can he be a sinner and do what has never been done before? This has had to have come from God. There is now a division in the church. Some on one side of Jesus and some on the other side of Jesus. Those who think he's a sinner and don't want to hear anything good that he has done. And those who think it, this is to have come from God. It's never happened before. They question the man and they ask the man all of these questions and they, they, they don't feel that they're getting anywhere. They have seen the man blind all these years. You sure you were born blind? Uh, you sure you weren't fooling us all of this time? Who healed you? Must have been a prophet that healed me. I, I didn't see him. Must have been a prophet. But now, all of a sudden, the Pharisees who are upset with Jesus, 
because he has healed a man on the Sabbath day, says, go get his parents, bring his parents in here so that we can ask his parents some questions. Now, uh, this, 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 this is just the way I see it. <laughs> They're mad with Jesus because Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath day. It seems to me like they're doing a whole lot of work on the Sabbath day themselves. Uh, it now all of a sudden sounds like CSI Jerusalem going on in this place because they want to figure out everything that has happened. They want to investigate all that's going on. Let's go get his parents. And when they go get his parents, is this your son? Yes, this is our son. Uh, you sure he was born blind? Yes, we are sure he is born blind. Who healed him? The parents weren't there. They said, we don't know who healed them. But they said to him, he is a grown man. Why don't you ask him for himself? They, they didn't necessarily say ask him for himself just because he was grown. Because see, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who didn't like Jesus, if anybody said anything good about Jesus, they were going to put them out of the church. The parents did not want to be excommunicated. They, they didn't want to be put out of the church and all of the church's benefits. Isn't it bad? The folks who don't think like you, folks who don't smell like you, folks who don't do things the way that you do things, don't feel that they can come in here and have a conversation with you. One might be because you ain't studied up enough. One might be because you ain't holy enough yourself. And even though these were the religious leaders, I'm going to tell you in just a second, they won't study enough. They weren't holy enough. They didn't know Jesus well enough. So now, after they questioned the parents, they said, bring the man back. And they asked the man again, uh, how did you get healed? The man said, I didn't ask it you one time. Why, why, why do you keep asking me about Jesus? Do you want to be his disciples? Oh, if that didn't make a man. Oh, if that didn't get them upset. You a sinner. He a sinner. I always say when you don't have a good case, you start attacking the people in front of you. Right. They didn't have a good case. They just said to them, uh, no, we're not Jesus' disciples. We're Moses' disciples. Mm. From my understanding, God loved Moses. God loved Moses from my understanding. But Jesus came and he is much better than what Moses ever was. But I, I, I want to give the Pharisees, I, I want to give the Sadducees, I want to give the religious leaders the benefit of the doubt. Because you see, they were never able to preach a sermon and go past the cross. They were never able to preach a sermon and say that he came down through 40 or two generations. They were right. never able to preach a sermon and say that the folks that said hallelujah mm -hmm. at the beginning of the week were the same ones that said crucify him <laughs> at the end of the week. They yeah. were never able to preach a sermon and say that they beat him all night long. They were never able to preach a sermon and say on that old rugged cross. They hung him high, and they stretched him wide, and he died that Friday. But on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. But the good thing about it, we have the opportunity to learn from their mistakes. We have the opportunity to read what they did wrong so that we can get it right. One thing that can never happen. We can't go back and fix the problems of yesterday and yesteryear. Yes. But what we can work on is right here yes. and right now. Yes. We can start doing all that God requires of us from this moment forward. Oh, yeah. So now, now, they're questioning the man and they're mad with the man and uh, they're asking him all about this person who healed him. And they're upset with Jesus and they call Jesus of all folks a sinner. Mm -hmm. And the man who is getting more and more bold mm -hmm. in his relationship with God, even though he's never seen him, he's only been directed by him to go to the pool and watch his eyes in the pool of Salaam. He's getting more and more bold because there's something that he realizes. Even though he doesn't know everything about Jesus, he 
realize they don't know everything about Jesus too. Yeah. He realized he might be a little lost, but they're lost too. All right. And so now he's getting stronger and he's getting bolder in everything that he says to and about the Lord to the point where they put him out of the church. Yeah. These same religious leaders who are supposed to invite folks in, who are supposed to go and give God's word are the ones who feel like the word is their word. They can treat it the way they want the word to be treated and say it to whoever they think it needs to be said to. But that's not how God saw it. And he goes and he finds the man. And he asks the man, uh, have you ever seen the son of God? The man says, no, nah, I, I haven't seen him, but I want to. Right. And Jesus allows him to know you're looking at him right now. Yes. Yes. And this man who in this verse says, there's one thing I know. I was blind, uh -huh. but now I see. Right. Ah, there is more than one type of sight. There, there is a sight that we can see each other right now. But there is also a spiritual sight. Yes. This man realized and recognized that he was in need in his life of something. Yes. And now all of a sudden he has accepted God as his savior. Yeah. This man can not only see physically, but now he can see something spiritually. Right. Uh, even though he was put out of the temple, he right. didn't lose anything. Right. Because evidently the folks in the temple didn't have a right relationship. Yeah. Now outside of the relationship, God has used him for his glory. And because he has been used for his glory, now he is receiving something that he would have never received in the All church. Right. In the yeah. Yeah. How can you give? What you don't have yeah. is evidence that they didn't have it. They were ready to put out anybody who said anything good about Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, if you ask me, I always got something good to say about Jesus. I'm at work and I walk in and something is broken. And they'll say to me, here comes the Savior. <laughs> I am quick to say the Savior's name is Jesus. Right, yeah. My name is Shelton. Yeah. We are not the same. I'm glad sometimes I get to represent him, but I will never confuse myself for him. This same Jesus met this man where he was. This, this is the same Jesus. Was the one who came to this man, sent him in the first place to go wash his eyes. At some point, we have to learn that God is the head God is the ruler. God is all knowing. And he decides the way that we ought to go. If we follow him, we'll be all right. We can't follow church. We have to follow God. And sometimes there's a big difference between church and God. And as folks who are blind, Maybe we can't see that. But if we decide to accept Jesus as our Lord, yeah. if we decide to accept Jesus as our Savior, uh -huh. if we decide, as Proverbs says, to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, yeah. lean, not lean not on our own understanding. Right. If we learn that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, uh, if we learn that we can do all things through Christ and not through ourselves. Thank you, Lord. If we learn that for God so yes. loved the world yes. Yes. that he gave his only yes. begotten son. Yes. For some three years <laughs> his son walked on this earth. For three years he tried to tell folks that just because you've been here don't mean you have all the right understanding. All right. So we have to get in his word Read his word. Understand his word. It's good to come on Sunday. God requires us. Because it says forsake not the assembly. That, that, that means that we ought to come fellowship with one another. Because we can all get something from one another. But it's not just a Sunday religion. You need to read something on Monday. You need to give them some praise on Tuesday. On Wednesday. You need to testify. 
Yeah. On Thursday, you need to read some more. On Friday and on Saturday, and every day of the week, you are to give yourself to Lord so that he can give himself to you. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We all are in a relationship where we are growing stronger in each other. Yeah. I'll tell the Lord, I said, Lord, let me grow stronger in you, and you grow stronger in me. This is not a one-sided relationship. I don't want to just call on you every time I'm in need. And you say to me, huh, that's the only time I ever hear from you. <laughs> I've told some folks, only time I ever hear from you is when you need something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to have that type of relationship with the Lord. No. I don't even want to have that type of relationship with people. <laughs> that the only time I show up <clears throat> is when I need something. I want the relationship that he <clears throat> modeled for me. In his three years that he walked here, to be the same relationship that I show yeah. to everybody else. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. God, we give you praise. Yeah. God, we love you. God, we lift you up. God, we just thank you for being God all by yourself. Yes. Thank you, Lord. God, we just lift your name up, God. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we can come to you, realizing that we've blind, that we've sinned, that we've fallen short of your will and your way. So God, we just ask that you will please forgive us for all of our wrongs, all of our sins, all of, our, all of the things that we've done that have not been pleasing to you, God. But God, don't just leave us out there as forgiven. Help us to be redeemed. Help us to repent, to return from our wicked ways, God. And that we would do things the way that you would have us to do. God, we love you on this day. For all that you've done. God, we love you for all that you're doing right now in our lives. We don't always understand it. They, they didn't understand it. And I can't say that we don't always understand it. But help us to be like James. God, when situations come our way that don't always feel good, that don't always look good, help us to count it as joy, God, so that when somebody look at us, they can say, what is it that helped you go through that situation and still have joy? What is it on the inside of you, God? Allow our relationship with you to be one that somebody looks at and want to walk closer with you. God, we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name.
just like the blind man. Thank you, Lord. When there is a change in our life, folks ought to look at us and know. They looked up. One day he was blind. The next he was healed. There ought to be a change in us too. So on this day, as we leave from this place, we're not leaving from his presence. So God, we just ask that you will go with us, that you'll cover us, and that you will be with us on each and every side as we leave this place. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, amen. Amen. Amen.